Și nu se filmează, camerele sunt doar butaforie. Sunt de design. Dar am eu o întrebare. Am eu o întrebare pentru televiziune. E necesar și traducere din engleză în română? Sau uh, doar traducere pentru Heimish? Nu știu, că poate cineva preferă... Am înțeles. Bun. So it's not a press conference, no, no pressure to stories. <laughs> so more no pressure in that. <laughs> And you can talk about anything you want. <laughs> When do we start? We start here. It's already over? <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's, 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 we're on. Uh, that's terrific. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for coming to the theater. My name is Hamish Linklater, um, and uh, I wrote the play The Vandal, uh, which some people saw last night, which these people acted the heck out of, which this woman directed and translated the heck out of, and I've never been more proud in Romania or any other country. So thank you so much uh, for having me here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. This is so great, and I have to say thank you so much to Andre and Andrea for for having thank you. It's like, thank you. And 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 I just I'm I apologize for myself under any circumstances, but particularly right now because I just saw that unbelievable cherry orchard and I had such a bad cry, um, <laughs> and I feel like so sort of humbled by the level of the work and. Uh, and uh, sort of like ripped open. And so these are my innards. Feast away. Uh, I, uh, 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 I was born 40 years ago uh, in New York City, and uh, my mom uh, is a voice teacher. She's a little Scottish lady, and um, she had me all by herself, and she moved me. I mean, there was a man at some point, and, uh, but then, I, I mean, I wasn't the son of God. Uh, so there, uh, but we did. We moved uh, when I was about two years old. She had this good university job. It was so smart for her to be a single mom with an only child. But then she quit the job and moved to this haunted house uh, in the country uh, in Massachusetts. It was a house that was built by Edith Wharton, who's the author of like uh, Age of Innocence and Ethan Frome and all these crazy turn of the century, a uh, wonderful uh, American novelist, she and Henry James, they hung out in this house with her bipolar husband, Teddy Wharton, and they all died because that was a long time ago, and that's how mortality works. But they, uh, they and their servants all haunted this huge house that I grew up in with a big company of actors, and they would do Shakespeare uh, all summer long, and I would sit on this big hill as a little baby and watch Shakespeare and watch my sort of family putting on Shakespeare all the time. And then sometimes they would, the fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream would run up onto the hill and pick me up and bring me down as like the changeling child. And I'd make a cameo. And, or uh, Benedict's boy. They started putting me in the plays every now and then because it was cheaper than paying for babysitting. They would know where I was if I was in a costume on stage. Um, but, uh, so that was that was when I started acting and the, and and the started in the theater and uh, and I've all that's been my home um, and it anyway okay.
chapter two. <laughs> oh yeah, there were famous people there. That'll make this more interesting. Uh, there, there was also like a, tra it was like a training company, and so you know these people would come through that my mom would teach, like Sigourney Weaver, she was an alien, and Richard Dreyfuss and Bill Murray, Keanu Reeves. Did anyone see a little movie called The Matrix? Did that? <laughs> he was a wonderful trinculo at Shakespeare and Company. Um, so, uh, the, the, my mom taught this stuff, and I think, from what I've understood, the training that she would do is similar to the training that you get here at the university, I think, now. She arrived, she left uh, England in 1963 to come to America because she loved John F. Kennedy. And uh, she landed and he was shot. And, uh, but fortunately, uh, on the plus side, uh, she got a job interview as soon as she got off the boat. And uh, it was this guy named Elia Kazan and this guy named John Houseman. And they were starting this thing called uh, the Lincoln Center Theater. And all this money had gone into American theater at this time in the 60s. It was a wild, weird moment when there was money in theater. And there were all these huge theaters that opened up across the country. And we had all these actors trained in the method. Everything was personal, and, so, and all the actors were gorgeous in close-up, but they couldn't be heard in the back of the house. So mom came with this technique at just the right moment, which was using your personal stuff, but actually filling a whole thing and being honest at the same time. Uh, I can't do it, obviously. You can see me, I'm faking, but uh, just to be loud because the camera's so close. Uh, but, uh, so anyway, that was what she, uh, she, she came with, she started, and that was what they taught at Shakespeare and Company, and that's sort of what I grew up around. Chapter three, more, there's gotta be more famous people in here somewhere. Uh, so, uh, I, but, uh, I didn't want to be an actor, I really wanted to be a writer. When I was a kid, my mom's father was a best-selling novelist in the 30s and 40s in England, no one remembers his name anymore. And my uncles were also writers, uh, and I wanted to be a writer. And I went to university, and my teachers said I was a very bad writer and I should give it up. So I uh, dropped out of school. Uh, I had a girlfriend who was older, and she was like, I'm moving to the city, kid. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go with you. So uh, then, uh, and I had got this agent by doing like summer stock and I kind of came on to the woman who was running the summer stock theater company who was this older alcoholic woman whose husband was very rich and so she you know uh, ran this theater company basically to get young boys up there and she like kissed me I was like 17 and she was like kiss me now be awkward later and I'll get you an agent <laughs> and so then she I did that because I wanted to get ahead so I got this agent and I dropped out of school and I moved to New York when I was 19 to be an actor and um, I didn't get any work and so instead I did horrible jobs like filing death certificates uh, in insurance companies, and I worked for my father. He comes back in the picture for a moment right here. Uh, <laughs> and and, and, and uh, I like painted stairs for him, and I painted them incorrectly, and he screamed, and I quit, and now he's out of the story again. Uh, um, and uh, But then eventually I started to get some acting work uh, in these regional theaters that my mother had filled with so much sound. And uh, uh, because in New York at the time, what you would do is you have an apartment which you can't afford, but so you but you have to audition in New York to get the jobs in the regional theaters far far outside New York, so you can pay for the place where you live, which is far away from there. And now it's the same thing in Los Angeles for an actor because nothing shoots in Los Angeles, but. You have to have an expensive house with a pool where you audition from, and then they send you to Canada and to Romania, which is so wonderful. But um, you guys haven't had me here as an actor, just as a playwright, but I'm not hurt. It's going to be okay. Uh, so um, anyway, then eventually uh, I slept my way into some film work, which then led to some television work and led to me moving to Los Angeles in 2000 with my then wife. And uh, it was there in Los Angeles when I was very bored and miserable and full of self-loathing 
that uh, my, my ex-wife, she was a playwright, and she let me help her do some writing. And I started to gain confidence as a writer during that period because people were so stupid who would tell you how to write that is, your bar is so low and suddenly you're like, hey, I'm a great writer. You, uh, <laughs> so we wrote a TV show. That's what I'm talking about, television. I hope nobody's recording this. Uh, <laughs> um, and we, we, we did this TV show which was Hamlet set in a, co in a Ford family, like Ford who made the car company and we shot it in Detroit and we had this fancy cast. We had Rutger Hauer as the ghost. I mean, what more can you ask for? And it was terrible. No one would watch this thing. But, and so then things got darker and darker. I started getting divorced. People started dying all around me. And I was like, I'm, you know what? I'm sick of being embarrassed about being myself. I'm going to just start writing about, um, well, actually, yeah, writing about a couple people at a bus stop. And um, so, you know, when things got dark enough, these guys came and took care of me. And um, I, so I wrote my first play, which was you guys. And that's what brought me here. That's the end of the story. I've done a lot of Shakespeare. Uh, I've played Romeo twice. I've played Hamlet twice. I, uh, I've done a whole bunch of uh, the sort of the Shakespeare's because that was what I grew up in um, and uh, and then some new plays as, as well uh, so yeah you know like the Broadway but then also this the regional theaters the theaters uh, um, but you know we have a di very different schedule like you go and do a play you do it for two months you do the show eight to eight shows a week during that run. This, uh, I mean, personal repertory system is so exciting. I think it would be so awesome. Like, I mean, I, I, you, you, getting to shift, like, take your, I can't believe Lepakin's gonna be fucking Hamlet in five minutes. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> I just like, I can't believe, it's just because the emotional truth of these, per, these artists uh, 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 transcends translation, so it's, uh, it's the best language in the world, this level, of, this level of work. I mean, I just sob cried so much at a play, I didn't understand a single word anyone was saying, except for uh, loss and despair. I, I, and and but it's also wonderful. I mean, seeing my play uh, last night, it was so exciting to hear it in this sort of romance with this sort of romance rhythms to it instead of this sort of boring. But to just hear it go. I mean, it's like fabulous. You know? um, yeah, it's a very good translation. I don't know the original, but in me, it sounds very. Good. No, she made it Thank better. You. Yeah, <laughs> she, um, yeah, I like it. I'm not gonna uh, now. From now on, you do all the uh, trans. I, I don't want to hear my words in English <laughs> <laughs> right now or ever again. Da, nu știu, dar nici nu cred că s-a pus vreodată, nici măcar de la început nu s-a pus problema să 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 ca piesa să fie pusă astfel încât spectatorul să zică, uite, e un colț din Kingston sau e, se întâmplă, da, se întâmplă, se întâmplă în America. Nu cred că ne-am gândit nicio secundă. Adică, principala problemă a fost altceva. Problemele, problemele și, de fapt, țintele noastre erau altele. Erau relațiile dintre personaje, poveștile lor, care, cu siguranță, ele pot fi universale. Și acum hai să începem cu complimentele. Deci e atât de bine scrisă piesa încât poate fi pusă în orice curs din lumea asta. Chiar dacă acolo spunem Kingston, Budweiser uh, și ce mai e pe acolo? Ce este mai... Camel Lights. Yeah, Camel Lights. Budweiser. Budweiser? Yeah, of course. Why do you say Budweiser? Yeah. And drink and chat beer. Adică așa trebuie să spunem de acum? Budweiser. Budweiser, yeah. Budweiser. Yeah, I'm Kingstar, yeah, I'm Kingstar. <laughs>
Are you mocking his native language? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone speaks beer. <laughs> I find the language just so incredibly beautiful. I, I, the pace of it, the speed, the rhythm of the thing is just incredible in my ears. So I'm very happy with it. And it's also, but it's a muscular romance language. You know, it's not just. <laughs> That was French. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, it's it's not. It, so I I, I lo love having it in my ear. It's really nice. Um, was that what I was saying yesterday? <laughs> Do you happen to understand certain words, certain, certain uh, no to make connections, links? Nope. 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 Budweiser. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, this, the, what I'm saying doesn't leave this room. Okay. <laughs>